Thank you to the organisers for allowing me to present these breaking results on filtered far UVC exposure to human skin. This presentation will last five minutes. The far UVC source used in this study was loaned to us without any restrictions or interference in its use or reporting of the results. As we've already heard, the first in-person study performed in 2014 contradicts the laboratory results. In this study, volunteers were exposed to far UVC radiation, but they presented with reddening of the skin and had minimum erythemal doses, which were lower than the doses which would be required for the killing of bacteria. There was also DNA damage demonstrated in both the basal and the suprabasal layer. To investigate this discrepancy, we undertook some Monte Carlo computer simulations and published on this earlier in the year. In these simulations, we showed that at 222 nanometers, the fluence incident on the upper epidermis is just 0.02% of the incident radiation at that wavelength. We also showed that we, the wavelength 222 nanometers didn't reach the basal layer, and that can be seen in the left graph. What we were able to demonstrate, however, is that wavelengths above 240 nanometers did penetrate further into the skin. And it was these wavelengths which dominated in terms of the DNA damage that was caused in the skin. And that can be seen in the right hand graph. This led us to hypothesize that the 2014 study, the source, the far UVC source that was used in that study, it was actually the longer wavelengths which were potentially the cause of both the erythema and the DNA damage and not the 222 nanometer peak. Therefore, we want to investigate this further with a filtered far UVC source carried out in a controlled study on human skin. And we are planning on doing that once we achieve some research funding. However, in the meantime, we undertook a self-exposure single person study, and I'm going to be presenting these results now. The far UVC source that we used for this exposure had an irradiance of four milliwatts per centimeter squared, and the spectrum of the source is shown in the graph here. A 37 year old male, Fitzpatrick skin type two, who burns, usually burns and rarely tans, exposed both inner forearms to different doses of this far UVC radiation. On day one, the left inner forearm was exposed to 1000 millijoules per centimeter squared. This dose is more than 40 times greater the exposure limit value as set by the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection. 1000 millijoules per centimeter squared was chosen because for an eight hour exposure period, this would allow a virus killing two millijoules per centimeter squared to be delivered every minute. The exposure area was viewed on an hourly basis from zero to eight hours, and again from 17 to 24 hours. And it was very encouraging to see that from this exposure, there were no visible changes to the skin. Therefore, on day two, the right inner forearm of the 37 year old male was exposed to 8,000 millijoules per centimeter squared. This dose was chosen to represent a very high exposure. The area was again observed from zero to 10 hours and at 24 hours. The 8,000 millijoule per centimeter squared exposure area showed defined pigmentation, which is a slight darkening of the skin. This pigmentation first arose around three hours, peaked in its intensity at about five hours, and was mainly gone by around 10 hours. Such a time course fits with, or fits reasonably well with immediate pigment darkening, which would suggest a possible mechanism of photo oxidation of existing melanin. 
However, the pattern isn't quite consistent with what we're used to from UVA radiation, uh, and therefore this requires some further investigation. To conclude then, in this single individual self-exposure study, more than 40 times the exposure limit value was delivered to the left inner forearm and no changes were seen to the skin. A much higher dose was delivered and changes in the pigmentation of the skin were observed, but the exact mechanism and wavelengths responsible for this are not yet known and require some further investigation. It is important to know that this was just a single individual. It was a self-exposure self uncontrolled study and there is need for more controlled trials, which we will be undertaking once we have secured some research funding. Thank you for your time.